ride out, ride off to glory, and he rode a few miles only and realized, I can't do this. I suspected we would call it now what he was experiencing, PTSD. But he's like, I cannot do this. He turned around and had to ride back. Now think how that must have felt, riding back into Assisi, having been gone an hour, and you were riding off what was supposed to be to military glory. And think how that must have been with his dad. Well, Dad, thanks, you know, for buying all that stuff. Turns out it's useless. That's twice now, plus the ransom, that this military idea has cost you. Francis had failed, and he'd failed in a big way, and he had failed publicly. Well, then Francis began to get some sense of religious vocation, and he even had an experience where Jesus appeared to him, and Jesus told him to rebuild my church. And so Francis, like, okay, great, now I've got something I can do. So he began to literally rebuild the building that he had this, where he had this vision. And, but he had no money at this point. He was dressed kind of in rags. And, and so people just thought he'd gone crazy. So he'd go into the town to solicit help or to solicit stuff, and people would throw stones at him and throw mud at him because now he's not the son of this rich, prosperous merchant. He's this very public failure who's lost his mind. Francis was going to keep doing it. He's uh, carried on, and so, but he needed some money to do the rebuilding, so he stole some money from his father. That was received poorly. His father clearly was done indulging Francis's dreams, so his father literally went, got him, took him back, threw him in the basement, and literally chained him up. He's not going to be allowed to leave until he's come to his senses. At some point, Francis' mother got him out, and so Francis has escaped, but he has to go into hiding because his father's still there. And so here's the story as Francis goes into this cave in hiding. Supposed to be a rich merchant. Failed. Supposed to be a knight. Failed. Supposed to have some kind of religious vocation where he does what Christ tells him to do. Failed. This ambitious young man is in hiding he is a failure. He is a fool. And it's in the cave that at last Francis really begins to become the one we know as St. Francis. So here's how this is described to, uh, to me by my, one of my mentors. He goes into the cave, and what he hears in his head is, you are a failure. You are a fool, because that's what everybody's saying to him. And there in the cave, he realizes it is true and it's okay. It's that last part that makes him St. Francis. And I think you can break that down into three parts. So the first thing that happens to Francis in the cave is he realizes, I cannot make something of myself. I am, in fact, a failure. I have to let go of whatever pride I had. And now, from this place of humility, God can begin to work on him. So humility is a thing he learned in the cave in a big way. Here's the second thing that he learned. This is what made it okay. It turns out God loved me. Nobody else does. Rejected by my family, rejected by my town, all the people I used to know, they all think I'm a failure and a fool. They mock me. But God loves me. And on, I can rely on God's love. I don't have to earn God's love. I've got God's love. I will always be loved by God. So I don't have to worry about all those other folks. And then here's the third thing that happened. Francis found joy in being beloved by God. And that joy didn't depend on other people saying, oh yeah, we like you, we think you're a good guy. And it didn't depend on success, you're supposed to build the church or be a knight or whatever, then you've done that. It's joy that is on the only sure foundation, which is the love of God. And so Francis came out of that cave, and a whole lot of things had to happen, and it's an interesting story that's for another time. But when Francis came out, he was deeply humbled, and he radiated love, and he radiated joy. And so Francis, who was himself a failure, could forgive the failures of the people around him. Francis, who knew that he was loved by God, could love the people who were the most obnoxious and hurtful. And Francis could be joyful always, no matter what else was going on. And people would look at that joy, and they would say, you know, I want that. And Francis would say, well, here's all you have to do. 
give up all your stuff, let people hate you, wander around, beg, hope you get food, maybe you do, maybe you don't, hope you grow warm in the winter, maybe you are, maybe you're not, it's going to be great. And a bunch of people, thousands of people, said, it looks like it's worth it. I will do that. Because he radiated that kind of joy. And I think what's going on is Francis looked at the entire world always as bathed in this love of God. And now at last we get to the birds. Francis was able to love and to take joy in all these people, some of whom were not easy to love. And Francis was able to, to love and to take joy in all of God's creation, all of which is created by God and loved by God. And so at least as I imagine it, who knows? Who knows what Francis was thinking when he preached to the birds? But here's my guess. He didn't actually think, I bet the birds understand all this stuff I'm saying, and they're going to really now you know, be better Christians because I preached to them. I think Francis looked at the birds, and his heart overflowed. And it overflowed with love, and it overflowed with joy. And he just had to say something or do something. And all this is to say, this was not some silly, sentimental, superficial thing. That love and that joy that Francis showed to God's creation was hard won. It was only coming out of the, out of the other end of despair and shame and failure. And what Francis can teach us is, of course, that lesson too. Our joy does not depend on our success, or what other people think of us. It rests on that solid foundation of God's love. And if we can stay there, we can love, and we can experience the joy, and we will bless. We'll bless the people around us, we'll bless the animals in our lives, and we will bless all of God's creation. And so I think of the blessing of animals as a sacramental act. And on this day, we will bless the pets of the people of the, that mean the most to us, but by extension, in that moment, we are blessing all of God's creation. And we're doing our best to see all of God's creation in that haze of God's love and filled and experience then the joy that comes with that. And so this is my prayer for us, my prayer for us today, my prayer for us always, that we can feel that love of God, that we can express that love to others, and that love will keep rippling out until it embraces literally all of God's creation. And I say that in Christ's name. Amen. And now please stand as you're able, and let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which you can find on the screen, also page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the people.
Today we're using a special Prayers of the People dedicated to St. Francis. In the, um, the prayers this morning are inspired by St. Francis's praise song to Brother Sun and Sister Moon. Most High, all powerful, all good Lord, all praise is yours, all glory, all honor, and all blessing. And it is to you alone, Most High, that we pray. You are praised, O Lord, by our brother Son, who brings the day. And you give light through him. May light be shed on your church, that your faithful people may bear your likeness. In the following, whenever I pause, please respond, O God, hear us. Today, we pray especially for the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea from the Anglican Cycle of Prayer. We pray for the Church of the Reconciliation in Webster, the Episcopal Church Building Fund, the Covenant Relationship with Diocese of Kumasi, Ghana, from our, di excuse me, our Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, and from our Parish Prayer Cycle we pray for the 12-step programs for Pat Reese, the Rendrick family, Al Riberty, and Helene Robbins. Oh God, God hear, hear us. us. You are praised, O oh Lord, through our sister moon and the stars. In the heavens you have made them bright, precious and beautiful. May the nations of the earth, whom they look down upon each night, be blessed with your peace. Today, we pray especially for the Bahamas and Bahrain from our world prayer cycle. O oh God, oh God, hear, hear us. us. You are praised, O oh Lord, through our brothers, wind and air, in clouds and storms, and all the weather. May you rain down your grace upon our nation and its leaders and people. O oh God, oh God, hear, hear us. us. You are praised, O oh Lord, through our sister water, Quench the thirst of the poor, the downtrodden, and those who are ill or in trouble of any kind, especially those on our bulletin prayer list, Bob and Kathy Glister, Don and Joan Hansen, Virginia, Lenny, Chrissy, Bob Rendrick, Helene, Alicia, Alicia, Madeline, Sean, Bill, Susan, the Kahn family, the Lewis family, the people of the Holy Land, Sudan and Ukraine, and all victims of violence. And if there are others, please just say them silently to yourself. Oh God, oh God hear, hear us. us. You are praised, O oh Lord, through our brother fire, through whom you brighten the night. We pray you to brighten your kingdom where the souls of the faithful departed rest. For them, as for you, may there be no night. O oh God, God, hear us. You are praised, O oh Lord, through our sister and mother earth, who feeds us and rules us and produces various fruits with colored flowers and herbs. Give us the will to care for her as you created her. O oh God, God, hear us. us. Be praised, my Lord, through those who forgive for the love of you, through those who endure sickness and trial. Happy are those who endure in peace, for by you, Most High, they will be crowned. O oh God, God, hear, hear us. us. Be praised, my Lord, through those who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone in particular through Judo here in the beginning of his second year in heaven, in loving memory of whom the altar flowers and the candle are given by the extended O'Hare family. O oh God, God, hear, hear us. us. O Lord, we bless, we praise and bless you, and we give you thanks. And with all of creation, we serve you and pray to you with great humility. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the peace. <clears throat> and the peace of the Lord be always with you. And Let us greet one another. Peace. Peace, 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 peace. Peace to the choir. Peace way in the back. Peace to Robert. Peace to David. Peace, peace, peace. Peace to Terry. And after you have a chance to greet folks to your satisfaction, have a seat while Terry sets the table. Our offertory is found in the light blue St. David's songbook, number 53. So before we turn to the great Thanksgiving and also the blessing of animals, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to pray over? Kim? My grandson Jasper is seven years old today. Seven years old today, which seven is the perfect number, of course. So, and Norma? My grandson is 50. 50, which is a bigger number. <laughs> Anybody else? So please join me in the birthday prayer that's uh, on the screen, also page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And happy birthday to both. How about anniversaries this week? No? So then we turn, we uh, are going to dedicate this uh, sweater that Mary made again for Margaret Bullet Jonas, our um, missioner for creation care, now retired from the diocese. So let us pray a prayer of dedication. Gracious God, we thank you for the ministry of Margaret among us. We thank you for Mary's skill in making this sweater. And we ask that as we give this sweater to Margaret, she will receive this as a testament of our love and of your love. And this we say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now for the animals. So I say, we'll say a blessing, and this is a blessing for all the animals all at once, first. And then I say again, if you're joining us online and it's uh, on Facebook, you can put, uh, put the name of your animals that you want to bless there. And you can bring forward, those who are here, bring forward either a picture or a handwritten thing. But let us say a, a prayer. Lord, bless all creatures of your creation, and especially the animals represented here and in our hearts. May their faithfulness and affection toward us never go unnoticed. Surround and comfort them with your gracious love and nurturing care. Let your gentle touch always be upon them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we continue now with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic prayer C, and that begins on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer, I think probably also on the screen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give God praise. thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you, you forever, forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By, by his, his blood he reconciled us. us, by his, his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Please kneel or sit as you are able. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. 
On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption, and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of our mothers, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
for our post-communion prayer this uh, morning in honor of St. Francis, we're going to do a prayer that's on page 833 in the Book of Common Prayer and not on the screen. Page 833, the prayer attributed to St. Francis. So please stand as you're able for the post-communion prayer, page 833. And let us pray together. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Our call to mission is in the hymnal, hymn number 625, verses 1 through 3. <laughs> 